Well, exciting. Uh, definitely excited uh, at this portion of our season. Obviously, December gets us a little bit closer to conference play. Uh, we've organized our schedule a certain way to face certain opponents to prepare us uh, leading into our SEC season, but also in the month of December, uh, which I believe has prepared us in several ways to continue to get better. Uh, we've so shown growth uh, in the areas that I've expected us to show it. Uh, some slower than others, but definitely have showed it uh, in a sense. And our depth has been key uh, in our success. Be being able to have guys continue to fight for different playing time, different starting lineups, gives us an advantage. Uh, ultimately, it's a long season, and, and, and that's where we uh, definitely want to always uh, be cautious of. So um, nothing but positive things to say about Kansas. Top. One of the top programs in the country, Bill Self, Hall of Fame coach. We share the same mentor and Leonard Hamilton, uh, who gave Bill Self his first job, uh, but also someone that's dear to me that gave me unbelievable uh, opportunity as a GA, 10 years as an assistant, and also countless amount of uh, phone calls being answered late at night whenever I have a question. So, uh, But nothing but uh, unbelievable rivalry in college basketball uh, that we're excited to play, it, play in. Dennis, I mean, you, you've challenged your team already with some tough road environments, but you know, there's that, and then there's Mizzou at Kansas. Yeah. And, and what play, Mizzou players face when they go in Allen yeah. Fieldhouse. How do you prepare your guys for something that's almost incomparable? Well, our guys do a lot of um, studying of basketball. They, they know the environment. They know uh, what it entails. But again, our schedule, I think you guys always have asked why this type of schedule. Being at a Minnesota, being at Pitt, they give you uh, road games to kind of build up into the moment. Nothing se uh, separates um, you know, practice from games. And the situation, uh, meaning our game at Kansas is going to deliver its own obstacles. We got to be able to see what they are in game, make the adjustments, and also uh, prepare. No different than the other team. But I'm excited about what our schedule has been able to uh, provide us with in the preparation. Coach, what are some of the things that you remember about last year's game? And how do you feel like Kansas might be a little bit different coming into this season? Uh, I have amnesia. Last year's game, you know, is last year. Um, I, I, I truly believe it prepared us for the personalities on our team last season, but also the being able to respond. I thought our guys responded uh, from that game in a positive way, and it became a lesson for us. So ultimately, the big picture, we're looking at this as a completely different uh, game, completely different environment. Uh, we have several guys that's a year older into this game, knowing what's going on with it. Uh, the history of it, the dynamics, but also uh, we have guys that are college basketball um, educated, meaning they know and they've heard through friends or different people uh, just in terms of uh, what it's like to play uh, in Kansas. Dennis, I don't think there's anyone on the roster with, with Caleb Brown injured that's played in Allen Fieldhouse as, as a Missouri player. Are you still leaning on him to kind of let players know what what that environment's like and what, what that's going to be like to walk into? Yeah, so Caleb Brown is what your question revolves yes. around. He's our longest tenured student athlete on in the basketball program uh, that's been at Mizzou. And that experience goes on the court, off the court, and also in preparation of games like this. Uh, we do miss him. I think having Caleb Brown in, in our rotation would help. Uh, but ultimately, we know what's going on and what we got to prepare for in terms of protecting um, you know, his, his injury. So uh, he's been coaching actively in practice, giving, giving good advice, and uh, definitely helping his teammates. So we expect the same to take place uh, while we're in game. Is there anything you might draw from in your experiences at places like Cameron or the Dean Dome and stuff like that when you, you go into a place like this? Yeah, Mizzou Arena is special too. Mizzou Arena is a special place to play in. I think ultimately when you look at uh, fans and their excitement for games, uh, we're, we, we compete when this place is sold out. We compete with anybody. Uh, we've, I've been able to coach at Cameron Indoor. I've been able to coach and play at UCLA. I've been able to coach in different places. Uh, and our fans compared to others and home court advantage is unbelievable. Uh, we know Kansas has a great home court advantage. 
uh, that's documented. But that doesn't mean, um, you know, we're going to go in there and not compete to the best of our ability. We're going to always do that. And ultimately, uh, you look at the history of teams going in there, it's like no other. Uh, teams have been able to conquer uh, Fog Allen. And ultimately, our job is to be the next opponent to try to do that. And we'll see. Uh, I just hope we give ourselves a chance um, in that last possession to walk away with a victory. And ultimately, uh, that's, our, that's our thoughts. Thanks, you played on your history and you talked about the, the coaches that preceded you. Mm -hmm. Are there any that you've maybe talked to leading into this game about what it's like to lead a team into, into the park? Well, Norm always talks about it uh, with he and Doc's conversation. I think every coach has told me, hey, um, this is the game um, in terms of that our fans and our tradition has circled, right? It's the rivalry. Um, the biggest thing that I can tell you is, um, you know, when you look at uh, two, two competitive um, traditions, you're going to have this type of excitement moving into the games. And I'm, I'm excited. Uh, but I'll tell you one thing I'm excited about. I'm excited about being able to be a young assistant for Leonard Hamilton, be a mentee to George Ravelin, hear them talk about John McClendon, and now be able to go back in Fog Allen, a place where John McClendon worked side by side with James Naismith and, um, you know, produce an unbelievable Hall of Fame career, uh, but also was provided to give um, even Coach Ham, John Thompson, Cheney, uh, George Ravelin hopes to be one day a, a successful head coach and, and me the same. It's one of the reasons I took the Cleveland State job because John McClendon was given the opportunity to coach there uh, at, at being one of the first uh, black coaches at a predominantly white institution. I think that's a very important thing. You look at the McClendon Foundation and the opportunities that they provide with minority candidates in administration or trying to get into the sports at the college level. Uh, you look at the opportunity that James Naismith gave John McClendon, and it happened at the University of Kansas. So it's a special place when it comes down to the history of, of being able to give diversity to the sport, but also the growth of our, our, our country. Uh, I think that's ultimately a, a, a unbelievable thing that also stands out. Uh, the connectivity between um, Bill Self and my and and me being able to be connected by Leonard Hamilton, somebody that gave us both an opportunity to be coaches uh, in different time frames. Uh, so I'm excited about uh, going back, uh, going to Fog Allen, competing in, in in this next game. I think the most important game is the next game on your schedule. The most important opponent is the people that you look in and see in the mirror. And that's ourselves. And we've always kept a nucleus around that and a focus around that. Dennis, now entering the stretch in December, just who are you looking at to potentially take steps forward or grow in the larger roles? And I think we have potential for several guys. I like the direction uh, of where Connor Vanover is going. I love what uh, Tamar Bates has given us. Um, um, I love what Ant Robinson's given us. I, I, I challenge Trent Pierce. I challenge Kurt Lewis. I challenge Aiden Shaw. Aiden Shaw has to give us a 10-plus rebound game. He has to average uh, one rebound every three minutes, and that's very important. I think he's trending in that direction in his uh, infant stages of his young career, but he's so talented, man. And, and to be able for him and Tamar, uh, these guys, uh, he, Tamar, Caleb Grill, to be able to go back and, and play – uh, in the state of Kansas, I think is important. Um, but it also says we got the right kids in our program. Coach, John Tanja hasn't appeared in the last few games. Just what's his availability situation? Same, same, game? same as it's always been. Same as it's always been. Any other questions for Coach? And Coach, with Hunter Dickinson on Kansas, just what's the challenge with facing a player like that who's so dominant? He's a good player. Hunter Dickinson is a potential uh, Naismith um, Player of the Year candidate. Uh, his success is well documented. We've seen him play um, from AAU all the way to Michigan and, and even now. Uh, he's averaging 20 and 12. Um, so he's a, a dynamic player uh, alongside with other players in this country. You look at uh, Zach Eady and himself, they're probably the two 
the most dominant post players um, in our in, in college basketball right now. So uh, definitely something that we have to uh, be attentive to. But ultimately, it's a team sport, and we got to make sure we, uh, as a team, give our very best. All right, thanks, Coach. Thanks, MIZ.